Keith Simonton of IMDb, uh, you've kicked my ass enough times in our prediction <laughs> contest at Gold Derby that uh, I got I to gotta come to you right out of the gate. It's late November now. There are some movies we haven't seen. We haven't seen uh, All the Money in the World, Phantom Thread. I've seen The Post. You haven't. But uh, I think it's early enough for us to start sizing up the Oscar race. Do you? Is it fair? I think it's, I think it's fair. <laughs> Who cares if it's fair? We're doing it. All right. And you know what I love about your predictions, though? Even though you're, what, a couple days away from seeing the post, uh, you, you and I are both have it in first place. Tell me why. Is yours just a placeholder, or do you have a sense about this movie for Best Picture? I, I, I mean, it's, just, it's the story behind it. Um, and I, I don't think in this year we are going to escape, and we shouldn't escape, um, the climate we're in. And this, uh, as, as you know, to all regards and from all early notices speaks to a lot of, of that. And I, and I think that's partially where um, the voting heads are going to be. Um, and it's Spielberg and it's, you know, it's people that have been kind of lions of, uh, of the industry. And, and so I, I've had it there for a very long time. I have too. I had it as a placeholder initially until I saw it. Now, um, uh, we'll hold this video till Monday when the embargo lifts and then you'll see it and you can maybe give me some quotes to put in the intro to this uh, chat. But uh, here's, here are my thoughts. I think that uh, there has been one trend in the recent years that a movie that wins Best Picture has to feel important. Uh, certainly, Moonlight was more important than La La Land. It felt that way and Spotlight uh, more important than Revenant. And this is exactly the point you were just mentioning on, on how important this movie is right now politically. But also, it's just so cool to see all these gods of Hollywood, you know, Merrill and Tom Hanks up there and just nailing it, just 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 really nailing it. And uh, it's uh, it's thrilling. I loved it. I, you know, Spielberg was not nominated for director, remember, for Bridge of Spies. No, uh, and Warhol, deserves, so. I, in that year. Um, yeah. And I, uh, you so know, I wonder. I, however, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to veer off, off best picture, but you know, I, I think he is a best and I've had him for best director, not winning. I think that's, uh, I think that's Chris Nolan this year, but we'll see. Um, we shall see. I, and I think Chris Nolan for a bunch of reasons, uh, it's, it's a, again, as, as these always are, this is a tough year because of Chris Nolan's, um, distinct stand on the theatrical experience on his decision to shoot uh, on film, of the way he's, he shot it, 70 millimeter. I mean, all of the, you know, literally the old uh, time uh, challenges. He took all of them on for, and a movie for, for a movie that worked as well. I mean, that's, that's one of the, I think, key aspects of this. You know, as, as you and I both know, you could be the greatest film in the world, and if nobody sees it, the Academy typically won't register it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, have, I didn't want to get off Best Picture, so sorry about that. Yes, yeah, so let's go back Slight to Best Picture. So um, I think it's I think it's the inevitable mm -hmm. winner of SAG Ensemble, uh, given the cast and the fact that it's film and TV stars. They really like that. I think it's going to be underrated by the hipsters, who say, "Oh, it's not cool. It's not like Moonlight. It's not you know, it's not edgy and all of that. It's it's traditional story arc." But on the other hand, um, boy, I, I just think it's really powerful, and I I even moved Meryl up to. Best Actress win for now. Um, I know that's probably dangerous. <laughs> I, I, I'm in the moment, Keith. I'm swept up, and and this is our problem as pundits. We get swept up in our movies, and we're rooting for them. And we got to step back and go, no, stop rooting. For it's them. like stocks. You can't you can't fall in love with them. <laughs> no. You can't do that, right? So uh, you've got th three billboards in second place to win, and boy, I love that movie. Uh, what what's your thinking there? I think it's. Could it be this year's moonlight? Uh, pardon? Could it be this year's Moonlight? Uh, I don't put it. I, for me, the the attraction of of this film is is that it's such a well wrought screenplay. Um, it's it it subverts a lot of things that you think you know going into it. Um, you know, I think that the performance by Frances McDormand is the best of the year. Again, I haven't seen Meryl Streep in the Post, so that's. Uh, I, I could be, I could be upended there. Um, but Sam Rockwell and Woody Harrelson, it's, it, they're just moments of, of strange and I think cinematic power in, in that, that 
it's it's it goes beyond just that old time. We're on a set. We're making a movie feel. It's uh, it's got a rawness to it that I that I really love. And I and I think we'll think people will. Every person I've talked to loves that film. I I, I don't hear. I eventually hear some quibbles, but it takes a while. I think it's best screenplay. Um, I would find, you know, I, I think, I think, you know, competitions, you know, the big sick, um, it's obviously a, a lady bird, actually lady bird to tell you the truth, Tom is my favorite film of the year. Um, oh, wow. hands down. Uh, if, 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 if I had a, you know, if I could by fiat, just say what, what was going to win, it would be lady bird. Um, but I think, I think lady bird shows up a lot, uh, this year and and not only just because it's it reminded me of breaking away actually um just that mm. that uh that true feeling of a of relationship with a, uh, you know a, you know a parent to a child um that that awkward stage of of finding yourself uh Saoirse Ronan's so fantastic i think i think it has a, a it will have a huge uplift as more people see it and it, it's packing <clears throat> setting records per screen for um, uh, indie movies. We did an interview the other day with Greta and 50,000 views on page, uh, YouTube immediately. It's just got this fanatic following, and for good reason. As you say, boy, this, this movie really connects powerfully. But it's a chick flick, and the Oscars have not been very, very welcoming to <laughs> films with a female perspective in the past. It's not a chick flick. Hmm? It's well, I mean, it, it's a chick flick. I agree. It's not a chick flick. I'm just saying that in the in this, it just cynically, as you and I, as pundits, have to kind of size things up. The Oscars are not friendly <clears throat> films with a female perspective in general. Them like one or two might get in. This year, we have the post is from a female point of view. Three billboards. We've got uh, Lady Bird, and uh, and it's it's wonderful to see. I mean, I I, I don't see breaking away as a, you know, from the bicyclist point of view or the, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I just find it, uh, I knew all those people and, and, uh, you know, just the, how emotionally resonant it is. I, I, I think it, it, it far exceeds, you know, pigeonholing it as a chick flick. Uh, I know. A, so. Shame on me. I think it's much more. Uh, yeah. I loved Darkest Hour. You've got that. In, uh, I'm jumping over your Dunkirk because we kind of talked about that. It's now currently the favorite across the board. Let's stick with Dunkirk, Dunkirk for a minute. Sure. And we'll do the two Dunkirk movies here, back-to-back -back Dunkirk and Darkest Hour. Um, and uh, it certainly is that big epic achievement. I agree with you, Christopher Nolan. Uh, either Christopher or uh, Guillermo will win Best Director, I think. Yeah, that is looking pretty firm, regardless of, of a sweep by the post. I think Spielberg gets in this time nominated, uh, and I think uh, it, it's my current to win Best Picture, you know, subject to, to change, of course. But uh, give me your thoughts then on the two Dunkirk movies, uh, Dunkirk and Darkest Hour, because uh, I actually like Darkest Hour more than Dunkirk because I thought it was more emotional and weighty. And well, your thoughts? Uh, I you know I have Gary Oldman as the my front runner for Best Actor currently for darkest hour and, and and i've thought that since they showed an extended clip at CinemaCon in what when were you were we there march where it was, it was just astounding um it, you know makeup the, there there's a few check marks i think already in this in this year and i would say at least a nomination for makeup for the darkest hour um and i would say uh coco for best animated film right now um but Darkest Hour is uh, well wrought. I uh, appreciate it a lot more uh, second viewing. But the one that struck me uh, even more on on my second viewing was Dunkirk. Um, it it and again, it's a cinematic experience. It uh, I think it's you know kind of that grand cinema in the way that uh, that we think of of film at at its at its best in in as a medium. And so I, I think I think Nolan has a very 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 good shot at best director, in just you know we're 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 now talking you were talking about Guillermo del Toro and I love Guillermo del Toro so this is going to be this was a painful thing for me to experience I saw Shape of Water in Venice and I was this high me too I saw it in Toronto and 
I it's I actually don't care for that film. Shape of Water, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, okay. Uh, I think it's so incredibly predictable. This to me is, you know, this is given Martin Scorsese the 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 departed, you know. Uh, this is given Al Pacino, you know, son of a woman. This is like, oh God, we love you. You're so great. And this is pretty good. <laughs> oh, I so, disagree with you so much. I just noted, you're right. It's not even on your best picture list. It's going to be nominated for best picture, right? But it wasn't no. nominated for the Indie Spirits the other day. And that was a shock. So you might be onto something here. We may be overestimating it, the rest of us pundits. It also didn't win anything out of Toronto. Um, right. bill, uh, three billboards took uh, the audience award, which is often a has been a good indicator of of a smart, literate audience's acceptance of a film. It wasn't in there, um, and believe me, that I'm I'm a fan, and and I found it so predictable, and the parts that weren't predictable. Um, were unbelievable. <clears throat> Jeff Shannon with the finger. I mean, Michael Shannon with the fingers. And and <laughs> you know, if, you're trying, if you're trying to smuggle your fish boyfriend out of you know to safety, don't fill up your bathtub over the theater with water. You know, don't your bath your entire bath. Spoilers. I mean, those are, like <laughs> those oh, are plots. The plot. You know. Uh, points that is, is unfit. I probably, unfit. And, you know, and obviously the production design is, is, is brilliant. Uh, the man knows how to make a movie and, uh, but I'm not a big fan of, of shape of water. I wish I was. But let's go back to what you witnessed in Venice and what I saw in Toronto. It was in Toronto. I was at the, uh, uh, the premiere. It was at, as I recall, the princess of Wales theater, which of course seats more than a thousand. The, the audience exploded with joy after the movie. It was this, uh, it had this exaggerated emotional experience so much so that that's why we thought it would win the audience award. But we do know that it didn't even come into the top three. So we have these mixed signals. We have on one hand, the audience reaction that apparently you saw in Venice too, which was were very passionate. And, and I would say much more than passionate at the, uh, uh, was it the Elgin? I think it was now that I think about it. Um, in Toronto. Yeah. yeah. And um, the, the, um, uh, the, but then it, it, it underachieved at the Audience Award uh, at Toronto Film Festival, underachieved at the Indie Spirit. So we're getting conflicting signals here. But uh, come on, Keith, it gets, it gets nominated for Best Picture. You've got Wonder Woman getting in for Best Picture over Shape of Water. <laughs> well, um, you know, that's... My niece is cried through, that, through Wonder Woman. Oh. Um, that is not to be discounted. And it's a sweet film it reminded me very much of richard donner's superman um here is a hero and sweet and just wants to do the right thing gosh he can have those still that's that's <laughs> that's refreshing i you know and i think that's also a potential for patty jenkins which i know is probably pretty controversial too anyone who can pull that together and it's 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 certainly not a not a perfect film it's it but it is a uh, well meaning, extremely well executed. Um, I, I think that particular character is a tough one, much as Superman is a tough one to bring to bring to the screen in a in a believable way. Yeah. So um, yeah, I've got one. I might, and you're right. I'm probably going to have to bite the bullet and put Shape of Water up there, but it doesn't mean I have to like it. You know, it's funny how, how obstinate we get as pundits. Like, I resisted this whole Florida project thing. I just said, oh, I don't get it at all. And everybody just loves the movie and, and is insane about it. And I resisted putting it very high on my top and my best picture list. But I've moved it up to eight. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people do love it. And Get Out, I just, I love the movie, Get Out. And it's we both have it in there for best picture. But I didn't put it in until the other day because I just kept thinking, a horror movie, a comedy, you know, a box off. I just don't uh, understand, but it is resonating with all the guilds. It's resonating with the buzz in Hollywood. It, it got in at the indie spirits. It, 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 it really seems that it's got a chance to uh, even win screenplay. Some of our pundits have got it, got it in there to win. Uh, it's a force. Not, not to mention, I mean, it, it jump-started the box office early in the year when it was pretty moribund. 
um, there's a lot of reasons to, um, and you know, the zeitgeist aspect of it, there's a lot of reasons to think that the get outs in there. Um, is it, you know, it's in my top 20, but it was just in my top 10. It just got bumped out because I saw Coco. Um, but it's, uh, it's a great film. It's, I, you I, know, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I watched it again recently on DVD. Uh, Call Me By Your Name is certainly a curious contender, and we both have it very high up on our list. I think it has potential to explode. I think it has the potential to uh, even be this year's Moonlight in, a, in that same way that it's the gritty indie, and it uh, uh, certainly has the, the gay theme, which is socially relevant, but it has this creepy uh, quality, too, with the, uh, the age difference between these chaps. Uh, what's your, how do you size up the whole the whole call me by your name uh groundswell which is huge the critical acclaim which is huge and the really controversial subject at a time now when um sexual creepiness is getting a special spotlight in hollywood um <clears throat> or is it really fair to say it's sexually creepy am i wrong even to say that well i i think it's a coming of age film in you know and it, more than anything else and um you know, it's about buried, buried past family secrets and, you know, what one's true nature is. And, and I think uh, uh, the lead, uh, Thomas, I'm going to butcher his last name. I was just, uh, Chalamet, I believe is how you say it. I mean, I'm going to butcher that. Um, carries off that lead um, in such a way that it's not the, um, the it doesn't feel like a predatory um, relationship which is, I think, you know, particularly with what's going on right now, an extremely different matter. Um, if you'd have had the Army Hammer character um, being very aggressive, and uh, I think you'd have a different conversation. Um, that, that the lead character is much wiser, much smarter than actually everybody else in the room, and much more aware of where he is. I think that changes the conversation for anybody who sees it. That's that's the, that's the quest. And really, if the Academy sees it or any of the guilds, they're going to appreciate it. And I think it will rise um, in estimation. It's just the people that read the plot summary and don't see the film that are going to have an issue with, with the film. Um. <clears throat> so let's finish up uh, this part of the chat with director. I'm scrolling over now to see your list of five. You've got uh, Nolan, then Spielberg, uh, then Luca, the d director of Call Me By Your Name. Yes. I can't pronounce his last name. Call Me By Your Name. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Patty Jenkins for Wonder Woman and Greta Gerwig for Lady Bird. So that means, oh, you don't have um, Del Toro there. You don't have... Uh, Martin McDonough for three billboards. No, I don't think Mark, I'd love for Martin McDonough. You know, it's one of those make that yeah. list longer. Um, but I actually think Greta Gerwig's got a shot. I do too. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, uh, in that Ben Zeitlin, Beast of Southern Wild, Holy Smokes, is this a good movie? Plus, everybody loves her. Uh, I think it's a possibility. I sure hope so. Like I said, it's my favorite film of the year so far. So. Yeah, I don't have her in my top five yet because I don't know who to boot out. Uh, who do I have? Uh, but she does, I think she does get in. Just if I just have to just distance myself for a moment and think about it, I've got uh, Del Toro, Nolan, Spielberg, McDonough, and Luca. Yeah, I don't so, think, uh, I don't think Martin McDonough, I'd love if Martin McDonough got in, but I don't, I don't, it's, it's, it's too crowded of a year. And, yeah. and I have an obstinate, I'm probably going to have to put, Del Toro in there at some point. Again, it's to me, it's the sin of a woman thing. It's it's, <laughs> it's you're going to get nominated for the film of his that I like almost the least. Others, we should say, who are really, really uh, in strong position to be nominated. Uh, Joe Wright, yeah, uh, could get in for Darkest Hour. Uh, that's a real traditional uh, beloved film for the Academy. And then Paul Thomas Anderson for Phantom Thread. We haven't seen. We have to be fair about that. Yeah. Um, who else are we leaving out here? Jordan Peele. I mean, if yeah. this love for Get Out is uh, really a, a breaking out, then boy, he goes along for the ride, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, and deservedly so. That's a, 
you, you want to talk about, you know, a, a self-made movie. There's a self-made movie and, and, and everyone's got to appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. And in this year where, uh, uh, women are doing, we hope, much better in the award races than they have in the past. Uh, uh, Dee Reese is really alive for Mudbound, isn't she? T Tim Gray, I see, has her in for a nomination. Yep. And uh, I love Dee Reese's Pariah. Uh, the year it came out, it was my number seven film that year. Uh, and it was ahead of its time. But I'm not a huge Mudbound fan. I think Mudbound is fairly stuck in the mud, frankly. It's... Uh, <laughs> But it's really yeah. resonating uh, on the award scene here in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, and, of course, uh, uh, Netflix is really tub-thumping strong. So uh, you admit it is in the running. I mean, it is in the in the. Oh, yeah. oh no, no, no question about it. You're, you're, you're exactly right. It's in the running. It, it's, what, it needs to be talked about. And what about uh, Glenn Whip, who really knows his Oscars, has got, you know, uh, Dennis, who's uh, Villeneuve, I can't pronounce his name, Blade Runner, in his... Uh, top five for directors. So we can't leave him out either, could we? Unfortunately, I think you can. Um, <laughs> oh, you bitch. Well, uh, if if Blade Runner, you know, if 2049 was a big hit, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think you've got a, a director who is phenomenal, Sicario, you know, The Arrival, and will continue to be phenomenal. Uh, yeah, obviously in the conversation, but not this year. That's... That is where I think you push your chips over to cinematography. Okay. And yes, because uh, yeah. that's where. Uh, uh, that's Roger. De What's his? Uh, Roger Deakins. Yeah, has lost thirteen times and can finally win. You know, Eighteen. Oh no, no, it, thirteen. Yeah, this is. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> do you know? 14. Who, do you know who Glenn also has on his list here is? And, and let me double back because I just said some. Um, Things about Florida Project, but he's got Sean Baker in there, uh, you know that who, who had Tangerine uh, a year or two ago, <clears throat> and he's got him nominated for director. There, let, let's talk about this. Florida Project has got is one of these uh, little indie movies that has extraordinary passion for those who love it. I mean, they're they're like Florida Project moonies, and that's what you need at the Oscars is that kind of that targeted specific, <laughs> right? Florida Project movie. <laughs> the Florida I, Project movie. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't heard that one yet, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag it, everybody. Uh, but Florida Project is the little indie that has been breaking out big time early on, and it could do really well with the Critics Awards, couldn't it? Number six on my top ten right now. Um, I think it's a brilliant film. You know, I, and I think Baker is a this extraordinary director who, you know, mixes, who, it, these things feel real. Um, Tangerine felt like Midnight Cowboy. I don't even know what Florida Project feels like. Uh, stunning film. And, and I, and I'm a, I'm an acolyte. So I'm a, I'm a Mooney. <laughs> <laughs> well, 